In this video, we're going to continue our discussion with estimating a population proportion. All right, so in a survey of 700 community college students, 481 indicated that they have read a book for personal enjoyment during the school year. Determine a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of community college students who have read a book for personal enjoyment during the school year and interpret the results. Don't forget to verify the requirements. Okay, first two are easy to write, so let me write those now. Okay, number one, simple random sample. Two, 700 is less than or equal to 5% of the population of community college students. Third one we need to check is going to be what? N times P hat times one minus P hat better be greater than or equal to 10. So N is 700. P hat, I can put up here, that's gonna be what? 481 divided by 700. Rounding to four decimal places, we get this. So P hat, I'll write as this, one minus. Multiply those and put those in the calculator. That's approximately 150. That's greater than or equal to 10. So I'll write on the side what that means. So the shape of the sampling distribution of P hat is approximately normal. Okay. So what are we going to put in the calculator? So that's going to be one prop Z interval, and it's going to be 481, that's the X, comma, the N, that's 700, and it's a 90% confidence interval, so I'll put 0 0.90. Let's put that into the calculator now. Okay, so how do we put that in? It's stats. Highlight test, and remember we're scrolling all the way down to one prop Z interval. So in our particular case, that's going to be 481 for X, and hit enter, 700, and then 90%. Highlight calculate, hit enter. So again, I'll round it to three decimal places. So that's going to be 0 0.658 and 0.7. One six. So let's put that on the paper now. Okay, so I've written out the confidence interval for that. Now, underneath, I'm going to write out what the interpretation is in the context of this problem. So we are 90% confident that the proportion of community college students that have read a book for personal enjoyment during the school year is between 0.658 and 0.716 inclusive. So we know that larger sample sizes produces more precise estimate. So as the sample size n increases, it decreases the margin of error. This also means that larger sample sizes will result in narrower or smaller confidence intervals. Okay, so the last thing we want to talk about is the sample size. So determine the sample size for estimating a population proportion within a specified margin of error. So in other words, you see what the error is. We want to be able to solve this equation for n. So I will write out the steps now on how I would solve this equation for n. So the very first thing would be dividing both sides by z sub alpha over 2. Then to get rid of the square root, I would square both sides. And I'll distribute the squared. And then you can take the cross products. And again, remember, you're solving for n, so I divide both sides by e squared. Okay. So this would be the particular formula to be able to use if I want to determine the sample size necessary for estimating a population proportion within a specified margin of error. So now I'm going to write this down below again. So the sample size required to obtain a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for P with a margin error E is given by 
we will always round up to the next integer where p hat is the prior estimate for p. If a prior estimate of p is unavailable, then we will use p hat to equal 5 tenths. So how would this work then? So this z sub alpha over 2 squared e squared would remain the same. p hat would be 5 tenths. 1 minus 5 tenths is also 5 tenths. So I can rewrite that. 5 tenths times 5 tenths is 25 hundredths times this. The margin of error should always be expressed as a decimal when using these formulas. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of examples. A sociologist wanted to determine the percentage of residents of America that only speak English at home. What size sample should be obtained if she wishes to, her estimate to be within three percentage points of the population with 90% confidence if she uses a 2,000 estimate of 82 and 4 tenths percent obtained from the census supplementary survey? Okay, I'm going to write the formula out now. Okay, now for n, we now have a 90% confidence. I'm going to draw this over here. Both tails are 5%. So this going to the left, that's 95%. So that's going to be what? An inverse norm. 0.95, or 95%, mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. Now, I'm going to write all the decimals out, because I don't want to round until the very end of the problem. So that's this. So that's what I'm going to put in for z sub alpha. Now, we're talking about a 3% error, so 3%, that's the same thing as 0 0.03 squared. P hat, that's 82 and 4 tenths, but I need to change that to a decimal, so that's going to be 0.824. And then 1 minus that. So multiply all that out, we get this. But we're going to round up. So we need, what, 436 people. OK, well, what happens if she doesn't have a prior estimate? So, I'm going to write the formula for this underneath. Well, the good news for this problem, we've done all the hard work thanks to the previous problem, so I can write this out. Multiplying that and putting it in the calculator is this. We will always round up no matter what the decimal is. So that's going to be 752 people. 